Hola. Welcome to the special edition of Plugged In, a show about all things related to energy, electricity, and our company. I'm Sydney Alvarez. And I'm Alfonso Quiroz. We're here in sunny Puerto Rico, where the gentle name Maria is a familiar one. But when Hurricane Maria hit this island, it was a surprising knockout. Our crews from both Orange and Rockland and Con Edison have been here now for several weeks, helping to restore an energy system that has been completely destroyed. We've got the stories of those workers and just some of the people they've helped out here in Puerto Rico. Emergency officials in Puerto Rico say the island has been the power destroyed. is cut. There's no way to communicate. The eye of Hurricane Maria just came ashore in Puerto Rico. The winds are ferocious right now, gusting above 120. The immediate goal here is to restore power to the people of Puerto Rico. home. I grew up here and to me it's like I, there was no option of me not coming. Esto se va a quedar marcado por muchos años y por las próximas generaciones que esta generación nueva jamás había visto un huracán. Yo sí, pero mi hija y niños nunca habían visto algo así. Ooh. Yeah, about 9 a.m. this morning, we put about 300 customers back. It was our first uh, group of customers we restored after three days of work. Very humbling to be back home and see what they have gone through. Joining us for an update on the recovery efforts in Puerto Rico is Scott Aronson from the Edison Electric Institute. He is the executive director. Scott, thank you for being on our show. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Here we are, January 2018. At least half of Puerto Rico is still without electric power. And it's been three months since um, Hurricane Maria has hit. Where do the recovery efforts stand from your perspective right now? So we're starting to make some real, real progress. And, and I got to say, it, it's frustrating for everybody. We're at 106 days since Maria made landfall, uh, but only 65 days, give or take, uh, since the industry on the mainland was asked to help. If you could you know, let our, our viewers and the general public know, what is the role of Edison Electric Institute? Sure. So the Edison Electric Institute is, we're a trade association. Uh, we represent all of the nation's investor-owned electric companies. We are here to support the line workers uh, and the crews that are out there, you know, the wrench turners who are doing the real work of restoring the power. We're helping to provide the resources they need, the support they need, the logistics that they need, uh, so that they can uh, go and, and do the business of restoring power as effectively, efficiently, and safely as possible. Let's talk about those boots on the ground. How many uh, restoration workers are physically there? So there are 3,000 plus uh, restoration workers, and that is a combination of the Puerto Rico Electric Power Authority, along with uh, the Army Corps of Engineers and the various contractors that they have brought in. Not to mention now, in the last 60 plus days, we have brought from the mainland industry something known as IMTs, or Incident Management Teams. Seven teams went to seven across uh, the island and are really starting to get uh, boots on the ground, assess the damage, uh, and uh, figure out what they need to bring crews in so that they can work effectively, efficiently, and safely. Tell me about the next phase and these seven teams. Uh, those teams are going to also uh, benefit from an influx of more than 1,500 uh, crews from all across North America, all segments of the industry. Who are also going to come bring expertise to the restoration. Uh, and I think uh, with that influx of, of people who really know the business of power restoration, who do it on the mainland all the time, you're going to see great progress uh, in the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Scott, thank you very much for your time. We truly appreciate it. Anything else you'd like to add? No, Sydney, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, I, I thank the people of Con Edison 
uh, and all of the uh, crews from all across North America that are helping to restore power. It's what we as an industry do best, and we're, we're bringing that uh, spirit uh, of one mission and one team to the people of Puerto Rico. Hurricane Maria left Puerto Rico in tatters. But before Con Edison and ONR crews could make restorations, they had to get to the actual equipment. And that was a challenge in itself. When Con Edison employees arrived in Puerto Rico to restore power, they knew the biggest challenge would be the unknown. The people here have been extremely friendly. When we, when we rolled in with a convoy of 70 trucks, uh, everyone was giving us a thumbs up. I don't think they even minded the, the massive amount of traffic we created. Here in Old San Juan, the utility poles are on top of businesses and homes. Now that's a whole lot different than what we're used to in the New York area. And it's creating a whole new set of challenges for our workers here. This area is historic. Anytime they dig in the ground, say, to put in a pole, they have to do a full archaeological dig site and, and find artifacts. Johnny tells us this isn't the only challenge they faced. These poles are on rooftops, and it got pretty crushed by the wind, so we're here rebuilding that rooftop pole system. We're either walking up six flights of stairs, seven flights of stairs, uh, working with our translators to ask for access to the buildings without just barging in. And, and we also can't reach some of these rooftops, so we've arranged cranes with our host utility, PREPA, to get us up there and get material up there to repair this system. As the restoration efforts continue here on the island, a unique opportunity is unfolding. Energy companies are learning and exchanging information with one another. The results are going to be a more resilient Puerto Rico. Me Puerto Rico resident Jose Hernandez and his cat Utuao. Hurricane Maria demolished the living room wall of his fifth floor condominium. Now there's nothing between him and the freeway below. Y a partir de ese momento, mi mente se nubló y yo lo único que busqué fue preservar mi vida y preservar la vida de mis animales. Jose has partial power and hopes the assistance from outside energy agencies makes a difference for San Juan. The immediate goal here is to restore power to the people of Puerto Rico. But what's also happening is an exchanging of information from one energy company to another in the hopes of building a more resilient energy future. Meet Orville Cocking and Jeremy McVeigh. They both share their expertise with the local island utility. So it's not just about restoring power, it's about restoring power in a way that improves the durability of the system. One immediate discovery is that area utility poles were not numerically identified in the field. We did here, we went through a process of numbering all their poles on their maps so that we had definitive references when we talked to our supervisors out in the field. And as we return back to Jose, he appreciates the knowledge shared by the experts to help make his island shine again. Many areas of the island are still without power, but restoration efforts are slowly and carefully coming along. Now here's the story of one neighborhood basketball legend whose power and game is back on. No. Mi Puerto Rico resident Sammy Benacourt Fernandez. Today is the day his power came back on, along with 300 other residents in the old San Juan neighborhood. Perfect. I'm happy about that. Woo. Like many folks here, he's been without power for two months. For me, the first time in all my life that I don't know what to do. You know? Sammy is a local sports star, having played for the national Puerto Rican basketball team in his youth, including the Olympics. Whoa. Well, my world got you have here, the Hall of Fame picture. That's a uh, Hall of Fame picture, you know. I got everything, my, you know, everything, Pan Am Games, Olympic Games. Like the rest of his home, Sammy's wall of fame is now lit up. He hopes to put some game back into his briefly dark life. Hey, it's about time, about time. Con Edison and ONR crews are used to going into all different types of area in our own territory. But getting into this one old San Juan neighborhood turned out to be a tight squeeze.
On the northern edge of Old San Juan sits an isolated historic cemetery and neighborhood called La Perla. The area is only accessible through a narrow curved tunnel. It was almost impossible to reach with our large trucks until our crews arrived and made the impossible possible. The only way that we were able to get our truck into La Perla was the north side tunnel. The tunnel was still so small we needed to take the, the truck apart. We measured the tunnel. We had the different heights and dimensions of the tunnel and the turn coming through. We determined we needed to remove the front bumper, the hood, the pole cloth cylinders, the digger control seat, air out of all tires, and relocate the control tower station. The challenge for us today was to get each of these 30,000 pound utility trucks into this historic tunnel without causing any damage. But you need to take care of the, uh, the surroundings and also the, the limits because if not you will scratch your, your car or doing damage to the walls. The vehicles cleared the historic wall with only inches to spare. And once the job in La Perla was done, they had to dissemble the truck all over again and squeeze it back out. It was slow, deliberate, and intimate, just like a tango. A little bit of work and effort, and a team effort, we got it through the tunnel and made history. The workforce of Con Edison and Orange and Rockman is strong in diversity and thought. In fact, it is women who are spearheading many of the recovery initiatives right here in Puerto Rico. These three women are a small sample of the mighty Con Edison and Orange and Rockland restoration team. I am working with um, the crews, the information that they're bringing back to us on damage assessment. And what we're doing is putting together an action plan. Uh, to me, this is home. I grew up here. And to me, it's like I, there was no option of me not coming. They're in full force to help bring electricity back to Puerto Rico. I think electricity is a basic need. When I saw on the news that the people here have been without power for two months, I wanted to calm down and support, and I wanted to make sure that our crews, our own people, have everything that they need. To many locals, these women and others like them are Wonder Women, using their energy skills to help rebuild a fallen system on this paradise island. The streets of Puerto Rico, everyone has been extremely gracious and welcoming to us. And as they get the job done, they also inspire future generations of women. It's a great honor to be considered um, a role model in any way. Cuando me dijeron que venía para Puerto Rico, estaba super emocionada por haber podido, um, haber tenido esta oportunidad para poder ayudar a mi familia, a mis amistades y a todos los puertorriqueños y boricuas aquí en la isla. Our next story takes us to a familiar site here in San Juan, a souvenir shop. But this one's a little bit different. It's got a New York connection to it. I'm from New York, Brooklyn, New York. My parents live here. I came to take care of my parents. I work here as a souvenir store in all San Juan. We have white clothing pretty much for the for weddings and baptism. It's been a little bit more than two months. So we don't have no power, no electricity. Everything went off. It was very devastating. Now I'm very glad that you guys are here to helping us to put the power on here in Puerto Rico because it's been a long way, you know, ever since the hurricane. I feel a sense of pride here because, you know, there's others that have good hearts to help us here in Puerto Rico because I think, you know, although it's a little island, it's a lot of work for the company here in Puerto Rico.
There is a strong power be between Puerto Rico and New York. Many businesses here in Old San Juan are still without power, but one restaurant is fortunate to be restored after the work of Con Edison and Orange and Rockland Crews. Take a look. After more than two months without electricity, Gabriel Hernandez is now able to open his restaurant in historic Old San Juan. We got very, very hit on the economical damage. All the resources that we have, everything that we save, we have to sustain all these two months. The journey's been difficult. Not only did he lose customers, but employees too. We pretty much lose 90% 90, 90 of our employees. Uh, right now, it's, the restaurant is in a very kind of, in a sense, like comatose state. The work to restore this historic district has been challenging, but not without its success. Yeah, about 9 a.m. this morning, we put about 300 customers back. It was our first uh, group of customers we restored after three days of work, uh, which felt excellent for, for me and the guys. The reopening of Gabriel's restaurant mirrors what's happening slowly all over Puerto Rico, the safe reconnection of energy. Yeah, we're very, we're, we're strong, we're strong, we come back. These guys are enjoying a game of baseball at Parque Barbosa. It's a public park in San Juan. And right across the street from them, you'll find New York's very own Con Edison. Our goal is, in order for this operation, in order for this mutual aid to be a successful mutual aid effort, it has to be a safe one. Hurricane Maria tore through this neighborhood's utility poles and left them mangled and dangling. And then the fact that they're laying on the buildings makes it even more difficult because, you know, we want to make sure we don't rock the, the integrity of the building. These cement poles will be replaced with steel, making them more resistant to hurricanes. Residents in the area are still stunned by the aftermath. Pero esto se va a quedar marcado por muchos años y por las próximas generaciones que esta generación nueva jamás había visto un huracán. Yo sí, pero mi hija y niños nunca habían visto algo así. As the workday moved on, Mother Nature unleashed yet another wet reminder of her tropical force. The crews here are working about 16 hours a day. And as you can see, it is raining heavily in this particular work site. In fact, the lightning here has forced the crews to stop their work for the day. Reporting from Puerto Rico, I'm Sidney Alvarez. The devastation that hit the island simply hit too close to home for New York, Con Edison, and the Orange and Rockland family. Now here's the story of one local employee and his journey to reach his local loved ones. Hi, my name is Leo. I work for Con Edison, Orange and Rockland. I'm about to surprise my family here in Puerto Rico with a little Thanksgiving dinner. As we follow Leo into a local San Juan grocery store, we learn he is one of 200 Con Edison Orange and Rockland employees that are on the island to restore power. While on a personal work break and the meal purchased and in hand, Leo heads back to his vehicle to begin his journey. So we actually drove from San Juan, uh, out of San Juan for about 35 miles. Uh, that is where Leo's in-laws live. And we arrive, and at this point we let the story tell itself. This is my wonderful mother-in-law, her name is Nitsa. It's very humbling to be back home and see what they have gone through. It's, I'm very happy that I was able to make it and thank you all the guys from Con Ed and Orange and Rockland to make this happen. ¿Cómo se siente, señora? ¿Cómo se siente que está aquí? <laughs> gas safety begins at home. Double check the gas is turned off. All the way off. If you smell gas, leave immediately and call 911 or 1-800-75-CONED.
everybody, uh, this is uh, Alfonso Quiros, and I am coming to you live from Puerto Rico. The company just recently sent a little bit over a hundred people here from the company to help um, restore power. I am going to be here for a couple days to see what's happening and document it as, as well as I could, and I thought I would share some of that with you. Right now, it just sort of seems a little bit like a ghost town. There's not a whole lot of people here. One thing that I observed when I was flying in, which I thought was a little bit odd, is that we were flying in, I had a window seat, and I noticed that there, there were a lot of um, blue roofs, dozens and dozens and dozens. As soon as you you know, were, were landing, you just kept on seeing more and more, and I just realized that they must have been tarps, that the people's roofs had, had blown off, and uh, they needed to... Uh, obviously put a tarp over it so that the water wouldn't come in. Our uh, crew members are part of what's called a mutual aid and what happens is that when there is any kind of uh, hurricane or any kind of like natural devastation, utilities will go and provide mutual aid assistance. Our crew specialize in two different types of electrical system. One is underground, one is overhead. And here they have, I believe, all overhead lines and they know specifically how to restore power. So um, I will talk to you later. Hi everybody, my name is Sydney Alvarez and we are coming to you live from Old San Juan here in Puerto Rico. And I'd like to take this time to speak to a few Con Edison employees who are actually live on a job site to see how they're progressing with the restoration process of Puerto Rico. I wanna to talk to I want to talk to Erica. Hey, Erica, can you take a moment to come out with us for a second? Come on out here. So, um, now you're an engineer. Tell me what, what your role here in Puerto Rico is. Hi, I'm Erica De Jesus, um, engineering supervisor for regional engineering in Staten Island. Uh, my responsibility here has been working for the control center. Uh, developing packages, we're part of the restoration group, so we're developing packages, ensuring that the crews have all the paperwork they need in regards to knowing what circuit they're working on so they work safely and making sure they have the protection they need. Once we know what's out there, they're coming back with that information and setting everything up for them so they can restore the power to the people in Puerto Rico. Oh, thank you very much. Anybody you want to wish a happy Thanksgiving to? Sure, I want to wish a happy Thanksgiving to my husband, Adrian. Um, my son, my two-year-old son back in New York, AJ, and my family who's at the house right now enjoying Thanksgiving. I love you guys. Um, to my family here in Puerto Rico, um, in Mayagüez, I love you guys. Willie, um, stay strong. We're coming, and soon you'll have power. Uh, to my niece and nephew, love you guys, and we'll be coming. Con Edison is uh, energizing, and we'll be restoring power soon. Hey, thank you. Guys. Thank you for your time and thank you for the work that you're doing. So let's see if we can talk to some other workers here with Con Edison. What's going on? How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thank you very much. What kind of work are you doing here to help the people of Puerto Rico? We are currently working to restore the power to Old San Juan. Uh, we're currently looking at the streets to see where we can go on top of the building and see how we can get the power back on. So um, when did you get in here and how has the reception been? We've been here for three days and we've been welcomed and we've got the most amount of just thank yous and uh, so much support and so much help. Uh, now you yourself have been here for three days. Now um, you are one of the volunteers. Tell us why you volunteered to come down. I think electricity is a basic need and I really, really wanted to help everyone on the island get their electricity back to the way it was. Thank you very much. You. Let's see if we can talk to some more folks. Come on over here. So um, you're, I think, also one of the volunteers that decided to come down. You just got here. Tell us about this. Yeah, so I just got down in Puerto Rico on uh, Tuesday, came down. So it's our third day here. Um, I'm excited to be here. By far, the best part of my job has always been to get people back in lights. So it's especially rewarding to be here in Puerto Rico when people have been out for over two months. Tell us about your role here, your, 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 the job that you actually do. So currently down here, I'm working with our restoration team as part of the uh, planning process. I'm putting together work packages, uh, analyzing the damage assessment that the crews have been reporting back to us and getting everything ready so that way we can give them prints um, so that way we can get our crews out, out in the field working safely and setting up the protection that they need. 
Thank you very much for your time and good work. Thank you again for joining us on this very brief Facebook Live. Uh, please stay in with our, or stay connected with our Con Edison social channels. That's Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And our um, uh, handle is at Con Edison. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Other workers gave up their holidays like Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, New Year's and other celebrations to assist in Puerto Rico. But the holiday spirit among colleagues stretched all the way from New York to San Juan. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad, prospero año y felicidad. We want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. It's extra special that, you know, that we're doing something from the heart here in Puerto Rico. Um, besides restoring power, we're, we're about community and to give back to the community here in Puerto Rico and make today an extra special day for the children means everything to us. It's not just doing a job, it's getting a chance to do something else on top of that. You know, like you have your responsibilities here and, and we're sent down for a reason. I go to this Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Really, I've heard. Love them. And thanks for this bike. Thanks for being my friend. All the Con Edison guys. That's our special episode of Plugged In from right here in Puerto Rico. Our crews with both Orange and Rockland and Con Edison have much to be proud of. And we're really proud to tell their stories about how they're helping people in Puerto Rico make a full recovery. Thanks for joining us. Gracias por su apoyo.